<laughs> Isn't that something? That's quite a lathe there. Uh, I consider it the best tool making lathe uh, on the planet. I don't think there's anything that can even come close to a Mark 10 double inch metric machine like this. Not even in the ballpark. Now, you might wonder why I have such equipment, and it's right here. Bearings. I fit bearings. And welcome to my channel where you can be uh, a millwright instead of a grumpy machinist. <laughs> Millwrights have a lot more fun than machinists. Machinists are generally grumpy and uh, they can't do a whole lot. Yeah, they can cut metal, drill holes and stuff, but they can't fix things. And uh, that's what I do here. I fix things as a millwright. And uh, as a millwright, you have to uh, look over uh, just about all of the skills and pick up a little bit of everything, maybe even sewing. I don't know. But this is the reason that I have the Monarch 10 E and the Jig Point machine. Now, what I'm doing right now, you seen in my last exciting episode, I made a little uh, flip tool rust over here for that um, manual grinding end of this uh, tool and cutter grinder <laughs> I'm using. Uh, I'm doing the old trick there. I have a tool post grinder mounted up there that I can tilt and the old fixed wheel head and I actually have two spindles out front there that I can grind both carbide and um, high-speed steel um, interchangeably. Well what I was doing last was I was creating uh, nose radiuses and I uh, have to increase the nose radius on this axelson because the finest feed is right there. Two and seven tenths thousandths, point oh oh two seven. And you can see the progression there. You know, it's really got uh, a nice progression, but that's the finest feed. Now on the Monarch 10 double E here, the finest feed is one half thousandths. So if I'm doing a cut with that two-step process that's been around forever and published by Kenimal, by the way, so uh, the grumpy machinists can't uh, pretend it's a secret, uh, us millwrights will use it. So <laughs> what you got to do is find the minimum nose radius that'll leave a good finish. And that's the beginning of high accuracy and good thread cutting too. So instead of when you're first attempting to get the good finish, which is mandatory for high accuracy, it only makes sense. And it also only makes sense for the most part that uh, precision fits with bearings or in alloy steels rather than hot rolled, but you should be able to do pretty good on hot rolled too. But like with the Monarch 10 E, you'll find that uh, the highest accuracy will be in the um, pre-hard steels and harder alloys. It's just kind of funny how that works out. But getting down to that two-step process, and we're talking about on Monarch 10 E plus or minus a tenth is not that much of a problem. It's just getting there. <laughs> and uh, the neat thing about that is um, uh, some people might think, well, how do you shave off a tenth or how do you shave off a, ha uh, a half thousandth? Well, you can't. You have to find your minimum depth of cut that leaves a good finish and then make a two-step process to get there using that cut. And um, like on the Monarch, unlike some pretty hard pr uh, 
pre hard that depth will be maybe just three and a half thousandths or three thousandths. So if I was going to make two cuts, the, the piece has to be at least 12 thousandths oversize for those two cuts to hit in the end, uh, plus or minus a tenth or so. So it's kind of funny how that works. But the fine feed on, on the Monarch uh, makes it so you can have a very small nose radius. So I might have a nose radius of about 20 thousandths. And uh, now I'm playing around with the axle scent here. Now that I've got it run in, I've been using it for a year and slowly getting the thing adjusted and working with it. And uh, it's leveling out. It was kind of twisted, so it's sitting here leveling out on its own way. And I'm ready to get this thing all set up to do as accurate uh, cuts as possible. So right now, I'm working on finding the minimum nose radius uh, with uh, this fee, almost three thousandths here, and get a good finish. So let's get going on that, just playing around with it. I hope you're all doing good. Okay, I'm working on some microphones so I can talk over this antique uh, equipment that is exceptionally loud. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a, a cut on this uh, piece of, uh, oh, it's like 4140 or something, scrap, and I can get a good finish on it. And I'm looking to see how the nose radius of 3 sixty-fourths of an inch uh, we'll do on this piece of metal. Okay, I'm going to start this up. The feed is uh, 0 0.0027 and the RPM will be 850. Here we go, loud! <laughs> three and a quarter inch and I think I'll try about ten thousandths uh, depth that'd be 20 on the dial Okay, certainly not looking to break any chips on a finish cut. <laughs> you know, that's looking pretty good. That really is. So, I think 364 um, nose radius. And let me show that to you. Right there, I hand created that on that uh, little step using a diamond wheel. Now, I can machine grind these, but it's <laughs> that adds some uh, difficulty creating radiuses. It takes a lot of time. Now, on the cutter grinder or however, but hand doing it and doing it carefully 
and using a loop like I did, uh, I'm, it's quite satisfactory. And I can uh, get some repeatability. Okay, I'm going to kick this around a little bit and see what I can do for some target uh, um, diameters. You know, just kind of play around with it and find where I am and then take uh, another cut and see where that ends up. Okay, we'll be back. finishing tool in the tool holder here and set it with that uh, vernier height gauge right. well that's a start Here. Oh, let me shut this off. <laughs> okay, now I'm shooting right now to be able to hit target numbers and uh, how much to feed in on this axle. So now that I found that uh, 364 is a good nose radius to use with the finest feed that the machine has here. Now, I have to find the minimum depth to uh, reduce deflection. And deflection can uh, really creep in. And uh, instead of using like my heavy duty chucks that, that deflect the least, I'm using uh, this light duty uh, three jaw that'll deflect the most. Okay? And when. It, when you cut too deep for a, for a work holding device, it's going to push it over and the part will end up bigger on the end. Okay, so I'm finding the minimum depth of cut that will give me the best finish possible and uh, and uh, being able to hit target accuracy. And I found that uh, uh, five thousandths depth, removing uh, ten thousandths off the diameter, um, I'm being able to hit things within two or three tenths consistently. Let's go ahead and try that real quick. It might be fun to watch. Kick it on here, run at 850 RPM, 0027 feed two thousandths and seven tenths and what else I got going five thousand step three sixty fourth uh, tool radius here we go
wipe, wipe that wax off. It's a pretty good finish. It ain't uh, super shiny like the uh, 10 E is because it doesn't have the RPFs. Okay. So, one of the things I like to do with micrometers is not look at the numbers and fool myself. So I'm going to get this on here. And I'm going to start adjusting it around the camera, around your head there. I like where that's feeling, right about there. And I'm going to lock it. I'll push it forward, and it should read right about on 20. Just about three tenths over. So that's pretty consistent with what I've been getting. About uh, two or three ten thousandths. And I think that's really pretty good on this machine. You know, to consistently uh, hit it that close but for like uh, precise bearing fits let me turn this off I keep forgetting that so I'm about two or three ten thousandths over on this and uh, you know I'm saying that that's pretty good uh, accuracy for an 80 year old machine like that is probably outstanding and uh, but I'm getting it to where I'm used to it and what I can count on. So if I want to do a precision bearing fit and having just this lathe, I I would want to do a secondary operation, make it a little bit oversized. Even though this is a pre-hard, right? I won't have to harden it most likely. Uh, I'd want to. Uh, turn it slightly oversized and finish grind it or make a lapping ring and finish lap it in the machine here to uh, achieve a good bearing fit. Okay? And uh, that's kind of the name of the game here is uh, when you're working with bearings is uh, to get them uh, as close as possible to the factory specs. And nobody looks at the factory specs specs most of the time but it's not well I'll give that one a thousand or a thousand and a half it's not like that that's like uh, pretty radical okay I'm gonna be back I just wanted to show you what I'm up to I found I'm quite happy with 364th nose radius and uh, these higher speeds lowest speed to get uh, the most consistent uh, accuracy out of this machine, which is about uh, plus or minus two, two tenths. Quite good, but not quite <laughs> the Monarch 10 E. Okay.